Okay, how's everyone doing today? Good to see all of you. I did not sleep well last night. I am attempting to put my cats on something of a diet because they, they just eat too much. So I've been giving them less food. Um, now, yes, I'm talking shit about you. Now this one, this one, come on. This is why you're on a diet, because you're so reluctant to jump. You know how heavy you are, you just refuse to admit it, come on. Um, this absolute chonkers cat, I, the way he's decided to respond to said diet attempt is by screaming the entire night. He's just big boned. He's always been a big cat. He's just, uh, he, he, he's an extra big boy these days. So, I didn't, I didn't sleep great because of that. Um, now the way Jake decides to respond is he'll just get super affection, then when he realizes that doesn't work, he'll just start knocking shit over. Like, playfully. He'll still be purring the whole time, but, like, he knows what he's doing. Kevin just screams. He just screams. Um... So if I seem like I'm mildly detached from reality, it's a lack of sleep. <laughs> um, but anyway, I hope y'all are having a, a good day. I hope you got some good sleep or have some good coffee in my case. Um, loading screen, how you doing? New Mexican, Sinju, Pirek, uh, Greasy Sam Lasco, Urban Mech. Assorted Lurkers, I appreciate all of you as well. Um... So what I want to mess around with today is we'll just be bouncing between builds and stuff. Um, I threw together a, a, an attempt at a gun setup and I wasn't quite happy with it. So I'm probably going to shelve that for another day. Um, pumpkin spice. Nice. How you doing, Kingman? Um, so the other thing is... Taken the limiters, so to speak, off of the hammer build. So the, the hammer throwing I've been doing, uh, that's been one-shotting bosses. Well, we've been intentionally making certain choices for quality of life that have been lowering our damage. I'm gonna see how far I can push the damage of the hammer throw. Now, this is gonna require giving up lots of other areas. It's gonna require some, some very specific min-maxing. But I wanna see how this works out. So, let's try it. Now, I was in the process of messing with hero points when I realized I was going to be late to my own stream again, so uh, I got to respec immediately, but morning, Dex. How you doing? Hey, Kitty. Good to see you. How are you? I'll play in Advanced Warfare Extra Survival. It's the definition of amazing. I never played Exo Survival. Not that I can remember. Not that I can remember. So this is a copy of my hammer throwing save, so I can just kind of mess around with it as as needed. And I'm trying out different, um... Well, first of all, the skill tree is different. Instead of going down to Executioner's Blade, we instead have three and awe. So this means we, we can't get that, but we get a lot more crit chance. But with six points in awe with it active, that's 78% crit chance. And awe's crit damage is shrine crit. So it is more damage on the throw itself. And on the dots that crit. Um, we do lose thousand cuts, but that's not as big a deal. And I can always uh, stop using this healing passive on my armor once I get a little more comfy to, to make up that that damage as well. Now, hero points are an interesting part because I'm also trying out. I'm seeing if I can accommodate two demon blights for the extra dot damage. It's looking like that might not be feasible. So I'll go back to this thumb cuff, so it's uh, two melee crit chance passes, one melee crit damage passive. And let's see what the crit chance is at now. 69.5, nice. So if I was to pop this crit chance enchant and have seven stacks of stampede, that's 90.1. 90.1 with 6 in awe, that gets me to 100 pretty comfortably. So, like, that's way too much crit chance. I, I 
Do I go one crit chance passive? Instead here? What if a Dolly feels he goes? Oh yeah, I forgot to pick that up. This is called Dugger. I can sell that one at least. Logically, I should just stop using this enchant. I should just go back to this. So let's see what it is in an actual run. Quag cursed. One hundred point nine. So no dexterity required. Uh, I thought I was gonna have to maybe change background. So to get max, to get one hundred percent crit chance with this eighteen percent pickaxe with two demon blights, I would need to change my background. But I'm trying out an eighteen one fifty pickaxe here. Um. So this means hero points wise, I don't need to put any into dexterity. I can just go Strength, Wisdom, and then more Attunement would be faster Hammer Throws, but I think it'd be more impactful to go more Intelligence for faster Frostburn cooldown. So I'm going to do that. Although, my Wyvern just died, and I lose a Stampede stack from that. Stampede over Mosquito? Yeah. Um, after playtesting yesterday, I can comfortably say that Stampede beats out Mosquito on this. Which is wild. Um, and I didn't expect it to work out that way at all. But it just seems to. Uh, Stampede is giving not only on-swing melee per stack, uh, which is basically with full Frostburns and Wyvern alive, that works out to about as much as you get from a fully stacked uh, con second chant, uh, which is huge overall. Um, to the point where I've considered dropping this con second chant for the 30% conditional to bosses and badasses, but I already have conditional from like up to 100 here and then I have 40 here, so I figured it's better to have 98% um, conditional and 140, 98% on swing, 140 conditional. Um, but also, Brutal Stampede gives. Uh, a lot of crit chance. Between the crit chance passive, three points in awe, ascended secondary stabo power, and 6.9% crit chance per passive, per uh, companion, this is an insane amount of crit from just one item. And it allows me to free up passives elsewhere. Like the more crit I get from my armor slot, the more I can take other things on my rings. Like, I'm able to take a melee crit damage passive here. Um, I'm able to have a demon blight here. I think ideally I would want double demon blight, but working with what I got. And maybe a barbaloid here. I should acquire one. Maybe a barbaloid here over the skeep, although <laughs> that's so much risk. Not a bad dot. That's not bad at all. Need run more to land. Also, with how infrequently I'm swinging, I'm not getting much value out of Warrior or Consec right now.
Redborn has a lot of effective HP. Caustic? Maybe Caustic, yeah. Caustic with, uh, Boss Badass for the pickaxe. It's probably the play. Because that's less min-max as well. That's like, go and do this. That. Yeah. Passes you look for in a demon blight, uh, with alchemical being a random element. I just look for duration passes, uh, milk lizard. You can get either two or three passes on a demon blight, and um, I go for as many duration ones as possible. Chance is not relevant to alchemical agent. You can get three different durations. That's uh, that's the goal. Doesn't matter which, since it's random, as you said. Does not matter. Honestly, I should probably go for one that doesn't take, um, that doesn't have frost duration because that affects, like, me getting myself with water slightly more than the other ones in practice. Good nightshade. Shame it's not full auto. Morning, Roddy. How you doing? It's so satisfying to see that dot do its thing. I guess we go Bulwark Buddies. Drill. Okay. today uh tired very sleep deprived other than that can't complain that much We could be hitting even harder. More importantly, we could have more dot duration. I 
I think it's fully possible to get one hammer for phase two drill without resorting to like Buffmeister. Which I'm very excited to uh, try and science our way into. That's some good damage. Yeah, after playing enough with this setup, the slightly tankier version, having less sustain, um, less, you know, indirect buffer, isn't as big a deal, because it's all in movement. As long as I can just keep moving fast enough, it's fine. Goodbye, Wastard. <laughs> we almost had the dot still ticking on him long enough to kill him. Like, the dot got him to half. That's totally doable. That's totally doable. I gotta figure out how to get that second Demon Blade on here. We're doing that. No question. So... I equip that and that. What's my crit chance? 73.9 without awe or enchant active. Sniper's at, how do you get it? This is the Tooth Raider, also High Tough Nation. Uh, this is the Tooth Raider. It's from the um, Cash for Teeth quest in Weep Wild Dankness. Now, the cool thing about the Tooth Raider is that the level does not matter even a little bit. Uh, the one you get while leveling, perfectly serviceable for this. Uh, we also found recently, uh, thanks to Stone Swan doing some, some digging, uh, enchantments don't even seem to actually change with item level. Visually they will, but character level is what it looks at. So just any Tooth Raider, because the, the cross bolts are always the same strength, and that's what we use it for. So thinking about doing a white item only build, it's on the very long list of uh, possible things to do. But yeah. So if I go this route, do I just go for the 21 pickaxe for now? That's 64. Eighty-two point five. Test in combat, I guess. Well, technically, even going over on dexterity is better for the boss melts than uh, putting those points into 
intelligence because the dexterity is giving a mild increase to my dot crit consistency. Very mild, but it does exist. Hundred point eight. Ooh, that just barely gets us there. Okay, so with this setup, I have a little less melee damage and a little less melee crit than I did before. But I get a whole ass extra demon blight, which means obviously I have that twenty six point three percent status damage, uh, which gets double dipped by contagion. So any contagion dots I get get a huge increase. But I also get that duration which uh, means that I could have up to three of my dots lasting long enough um, that they're still ticking after boss immunity phases. That might be enough to kill Wasker with the dot, like from hitting him with a hammer in his first phase. The dot could kill him in the second phase. Hopefully it is. Let's find out. And my melee damage is a bit lower. So maybe I should incorporate the Rapscallion over the Scalawag. But I lose that global damage. Is that worth? Do I need that enchant on a Rapscallion? Maybe. Maybe. Hey, Fireball. How you doing? <laughs> you know, I forgot about her. I like this enchant, but not really relevant to what Frostburn's doing. Especially not with without um XC Blade. Going for uh action skill start twenty global is the, the hope. It's not quite cooperating. Maybe I roll the other one. <laughs> Funny how that works out. Okay, well, I need moon orbs. Fortunately, this gives an opportunity to see how many moon orbs we get for a boss run on uh, C100. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, Captain Spaulding. Uh, I have a question running Blightgrave Deathless, not having an issue, looking to upgrade my ward, using full battery for lightning damage, wondering if you have a better recommendation. Uh, almost anything that isn't a full battery. Uh, full battery does not do any meaningful damage at all when you're anything above leveling uh, because unlike say borderlands 3 where you had that very handy mayhem scaling for shield damage effects so like if you used a frozen heart well the reason why it still did good damage on mayhem 10 was because shields were given at times 34 damage multiplier on mayhem 10 there's nothing like that in this game so you still have to deal with 4400 percent more enemy health on chaos 100 but there's nothing to increase the damage of your ward effects. And those were already falling behind all the way back at C20, which was like plus 400% enemy health. So 4,000% more on something that already wasn't doing good damage. 
full battery is not a good ward for end game purposes at all. Um, if you're doing deathless stuff, then the biggest capacity you're going to see would be a static charge. Um, or a mace wardu, or a master rune, or kinetic friction. Uh, those are all going to be in the same sphere, depending on how many HP and health bonuses you have. Some might win over others, but those are all like raw, good buffer. Um, of those, Static Charge also has the perk of when you slide, you can recharge uh, a percentage as you slide. That's helpful. Um, I'd go with any of those. Uh, body Rune, the heal wouldn't be relevant, but the, the fire bonus element is still relevant. Um, Spirit Rune is an option. You get, uh, if you stand still for a couple frames, you just start recharging. It's slow, but you start recharging. Um, but I would say not full battery. Full battery would be one of the weaker options. Awesome, thank you, sir. You're awesome. Happy to help out. Ooh, Trick Mirror is a really good one. Forgot to mention that. Trick Mirror is a really good uh, reflect shield. And it's uh, very part flexible with a decent capacity as well. So against, like, ranged skeletons and pirates in particular, it would do quite well. Goes on about big and great shields, glances at his 233. <laughs> Listen. It's not the size, it's what you do with it. So we did actually have um, the dots still ticking. It didn't phase Nightmare. But it makes me think about, what if I ran a, an armor with more potent poisons? Stabo Claw armor is... What skills? Let's see. Out of farm, not of farm words. Uh, yeah, fortunately, Ward Bunny will just give you a bunch of choices. You just pick the best from what you see. I need to peek at this. So let's see. Um, Claw Stabo is all of the Thunder Nimble Fingers. That's what I have. Stabo Claw... Is exploit their weakness, potent poisons. So I'd be giving up class power for hammer throw, which would be a lot of base damage, but I could get more dot duration. I'd be losing awe as well, though, but I'd be getting higher Stapo class power. So I'd get some of that crit chance back. I don't think it's worth doing, but it's fun to think about. Just thinking about ways to get more dot duration. <laughs> Hey Hawken, how you doing? Good to see you. Something I keep forgetting to do. So if you guys don't know Hawken around, uh, this is an individual who does not give themselves enough credit for like how fucking good they are at video games. Uh, Hawken is like in spitting distance of setting a new flak guardian takedown, true guardian takedown world record. Um, so like, yeah. If if you ever want to see really good flag gameplay and also just good vibes and, and stuff, uh, do, do, do the thing. Go over there. Go over there. And, 
and I'm I'm bad at remembering to follow people too. But I was watching Hawking the other day and I had a great time. Hey Twisted Grin, how you doing? Hey Dex, thanks for taking care of Hawken. I appreciate it. Another day, another dollar. I feel ya. It's a lot to hear kind of words from you. A lot of respect for me means quite a lot. Hey, I mean every word. Sir, why are you here? The room's over. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean every word. I mean every word. And you really don't give yourself enough credit. Okay, so this is another good test. Didn't have the curse wood active there. Mm. Maybe this is optimal, though. Because now I can just set up a second one. And miss it completely. Every capable doing, like, a space-themed build? I mean, space-themed. This is awkward. The more I lean away from Exe Blade, the more damage I lose. Stop that. Do your next phase. There we go. Unlimited meteors. Oh. I mean, Polymorph Calamity just kind of does that. It's absolutely a thing you can do. Yeah, so this is probably more of a shoot a stab -a -matic type thing with um, this version of the setup. Not having Executioner's Blades are off, because this is cryo damage when I'm using a cryo weapon. So it's still benefiting from soaked and elemental boosts, but it's not getting knocked to no damage by Solicis Resist like our, our hammer is. But we don't have that at the moment. That was Contagion going hard right there. I was a bit worried about not using Barbalode here, but I I think Skeep is still going to be the play. 
Ooh, extra projectile, love struck bow. That doesn't give you more than two bows, but it makes your two bows fire two shots. Which is more crossable. So if you're trying to make bow like a support thing for your gun damage builds, I think extra projectile, extra charge cooldown is the best case. Damn, use lightning on shield, Salissa. Haha, <laughs> you fool. Salissa's lightning resist is very strong. I think it's stronger than Drill's lightning resist. Speaking of Drill. Can a bow get two charges? It can. Drill whose presence comes when you ask. No. I think Soaked was off by the time I had... As much as I want to include the Rapscallion, trying to do that much juggling, like going 1, 2, 3, uh, without swap speed uh, on a ranged attack is rough. At point blank, it's fine, but I think I had got to accept that I just can't do that on drill. Do I lose that much on this guy from uh, having less melee damage? That's really interesting. Let's switch this. Or... Actually, I can just do a two-piece swap and it works out. Poopy day out today, rain go away. It's supposed to get pretty stormy here later. It's not too bad right now. Um, but it's supposed to be bad later, yeah. yeah there we go, that's, that's better damage. Take a rain over here. Just woke up as the hotfix out. Hotfixes don't come out until uh, about noon Eastern. So, two hours from now. Hour 42, really, but. I'm thinking about this. I'm really thinking about that. Diamond Guard tur turning the hammer into cryo against drill for that phase would be pretty good. I just worry about the crit chance. But I can always just get lucky. Oh, the Rapscallion totally makes a difference. The 
but we're gonna do something cursed you never see me do. Also, I can see how many moon orbs. Wow, already almost at uh, at cap without even using the chest. Yeah, very comfortably cap out your moon orbs for run. Boss runs at uh, C100. Yeah, you're gonna see me some do something I never ever 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 do. Farm a boss? Not farming boss, going to the boss's actual location. Because you have no reason to do that. But I'm doing it. Because I want to try out Diamond Guard Sword. The crit chance with that is going to be very, very low. So... Not in a dungeon. We'll go with that. I still have that thumbs main. Only 15%. Um, that'll suffice for now. Oh, they're noticeably easier here because they're not as high level. Yeah. Yeah. But thanks, Stone Swan. Yeah. Um, we'll have two Tooth Raiders. One for the actual debuffing, and then one for the throw. So crit chance here, 63%. That's with double shell casing, that's without the frost burns. If I switch this one to... Sixty-eight point nine, almost sixty-nine, just short of sixty-nine. A dexterity investment could take me over seventy here, but I want to see how this works out. Just get to the next phase. What element am I on? I guess I should have Stavmatic on to see what element. Okay, I'm on poison. Still on poison? Still on poison. Alright, I need him to get over here. Gotta actually physically connect with a diamond guard sword to change the element of your melee. Are you still on poison? Fire. Um, fire is a decent test. Okay. 
It's a lot more damage. Even with the level difference, that is more damage. Um, but it's a lot of swaps to get that working that way. Also, suboptimal enchant for this. You're not the boss of your sword. That's something I want to do, but I don't know if I can justify doing. Now, another approach. I could try to brute force a lucky crit with salt and battery, and then it would hit very hard. But I think ultimately this is still the play. Do I have this in caustic? I have a 21-130 with caustic. Still get there with the 18-150. Let me swap that that way. Side note, I've never listened to this much of the drill track. It's growing on me. I don't think I've ever actually spent this long in this room before, able to hear the music. Ninety eight point six or three point three. Okay. Save quit. Drill whose side job is test on me. Feel like that sometimes. Oh yeah, thumb cuffs are not gonna work out the same way because I'm not a dungeon. Um I have an appropriate shell casing. For this. No. no. I do, I do. Okay, shoot three. Uh, soak, shoot three, switch, throw. Not having the thumb cuffs active is awkward. Class mod to use for this. Brutal Stampede. Because it is the way to get a lot of crit chance. Um, while also getting some damage. Of the armors that give crit chance in their effect, it is only Brutal Stampede and Diamond Gauntlets. And Brutal Stampede gives more damage. Okay. That's satisfactory. So I can always finish with other weapons as needed. I'm here. I should use the the nineteen. Mm. 
consistency. Ha! Okay, so... 18-150. I want the other enchant. I want bosses, badasses, because I'm gonna do less swinging as a whole. Switch back to that. Use that. Alright, back to the chaos chamber. Good information. That's around 22 in Exo Survival. Nice. I'm feeling this isn't going to be kind to me. Pain. Suffering. Sadness. Pain suffering, constantly getting slapped by maxed out laser guns. Hmm. Sure my stats are in order. And then all it takes me there. Cool. Excited for the new feature. Hopefully it's uh, one that's still comfortable to do. So we can get some easy maker runs. I don't like the way they did the aspect bosses specifically because of the green ones thing you have to do. Why? W what about it? That's the easiest one. Aim, aim his ass when it comes to shooting little things. Good thing you don't have to aim at them. There is an entire category of item that makes these bubbles, and every single one of them destroys all the bark targets at once, and the game allows you to proceed. Literally any sigil. <laughs> Amelda, yeah, Mango. Amelda, Slayer of Fun. This Chaos Bug? No, it's not. Oh, 
Ooh, that dot was ticking in the millions. Blaze of Glory bonus element. What all does that apply to? It says guns. It's lying. Or it implies guns. It doesn't necessarily directly say guns, but the way that reads, it's, it's implying guns. It's lying. It applies to more. I just don't remember specifically what. Well, that good you thought it's chaos fuck. It's always a good sign, is it not? It's just because my Tooth Raider shot took more of a chunk than I was expecting. Hey, let's drill again. Back so soon. What does this one thing do? Let's read it. Ah, yes, it's lying. <laughs> More like selling itself short, I suppose. Time needs more self confidence. That's a mood. Yeah, that was a good hit. That was solid. Not quite. How do we get that damage? Um, well, Curse Wit is doing less than a body or spirit rune would do there. That would be how we get that damage. What if I run around with a body rune instead for a while? Actual shield buffer? Gross. I'm kidding. I love having shield buffer. Just, uh... It's been interesting experimenting without it. Exeblade spec? No. Trying out an alt spec today without Exeblade. Still kills, just a little less stressful. I don't need to barrel stuff. The bark thing does have to be an on level sigil? No. Literally any sigil. When I say any sigil, I mean any sigil. Type does not matter, level does not matter, element does not matter, parts do not matter. Any sigil. For Banshee, I do want to use Curse Wit, though. So she can get styled upon properly.
slow. Really wish there were uh, more sources of swap speed in this game. Berserker is the only one in the entire game. And even Berserkers kind of tend to skip it a lot of the time. I don't, because I'm weird. But I miss swap speed. Swapsuit feels good. It really does. The utterly absurd amount Amara could get in BL3 kind of spoiled me. Gun handling the swap speed? No. Never has. Probably never will. Gun handling is just recoil control. That's all it is. Would love to have seen that as a mythic thing. Yeah. Would bad egg be any decent for this build? Yeah, bad egg would be really good. Um, bad egg would function as the curse wit is here, except it would be giving me always on move speed. Had a little more augment flexibility, and the bonus I would be getting uh, when it's depleted, while it would be smaller potentially than Curse Wit, it wouldn't be conditional on range. So, like, I'd be able to benefit from Bad Egg versus Bernadette, for example, whereas Curse Wit is doing nothing for me versus Bernadette. So, Bad Egg would be great, yeah. I should probably keep one on me. Let's hit the bunnies now. How you doing, Paradox? Good to see you. Miss my swap speed and slide speed in BL3. We have one source of slide speed in this game, at least. Um, something to note about map design in this game, though, is we have fewer places in endgame content to, like, use the slide speed as effectively, but it can be helpful still. Doing great? Hey, glad to hear.
Oh, I thought of another weird um, ward tech thing I want to try out. Where, where, where is the thing? Okay, so spike parts. Spikes deal the elements of the shield they're on. Um, this one happens to be poison, which is perfect for the example. Uh, Blight Collar is bogged down, just wants you to do poison damage. It has a chance to trigger on doing non-status poison damage. In theory, that means a spike shield could trigger bogged down. So you wouldn't have to run, like, a source of poison damage at all. If you had this. Um, another theory there is, um, can it? Requires testing, but in theory it should work. Another option is if you wanted to be super meme a uh, Stabomancer has a very bad Warden chant that does constant poison Novas for a few seconds after ending from the shadows. That could maybe be a silly way of applying Bog Down if you were doing, uh, Blade Caller from the shadows. Um stuff and you didn't have any other sources of poison it doesn't seem practical but it seems like something you could do to showcase hey this is possible other stuff they could do that of course uh pandemicium which you could start from a dot um nova's spikes No bad eggs anywhere in here, really? Hmm. Would Garlic Breath do that? Yeah. Garlic Breath, I don't know how it holds up damage-wise nowadays, but um, when I was using it at C35, it was pretty good. The enchant lists itself as status damage, though. You're right. You're right. The enchant... The Savmancer enchant calls itself status damage, even though it doesn't properly scale off that damage source status, so it probably wouldn't work. But spikes should, novas should, undead packed skulls are poison, right? That should work as well. Yeah, that's Savamancer enchant, sad. White Rider is my favorite way to use poison. White Rider is a great gun in general. Good at so many things. No bad eggs. Guess I'll get it on the next one. Yeah, still a bit of inventory slot. Wicked Gossip has been what I've been using on my black collar. Black collar quite enjoy it. Wicked Gossip hits crazy hard. It's so good. Love that spell. And it's got a lot of flavor to it. Terrible at making sandwiches.
You gonna hit me? Even when you miss, watching it bounce is so satisfying. Optimal use of it is missing, but close enough that the, the splash still hits the main target. So, like, bouncing it into a target lets you hit them twice. And you could have up to three projectiles on a Wicked Gossip. So, with one cast, you can hit one target six times. And um, the ricochets that happen off a target, those will then double dip. You get a lot of damage out of a, a well-targeted Wicked Gossip. I don't have good aim, but with good aim, you can do crazy damage with it. One of the best spells in the game? Absolutely. There's like a level of spell performance that only a few spells are in where they can just completely bully the whole game. And that's like Laser Hand, Wicked Gossip, Ice Spikes. Um, there's a couple others that get in there in certain builds. I'm talking about direct damage dealing spells here, not the obvious one. Um... Like, you can get Dazzler to perform extremely well against the right target in the right situation. Same with Threads of Fate. Um, but the ones that are, like, almost universal, hey, this will just fuck them up. Uh, Wicked Gossip, Laser Hand, Ice Spikes. I had a lot of fun with Trickster Ice Spike for mobbing. Trickster Ice Spike, incredible in mobbing. Um, both single and triple Ice Spikes are great single target. And then Splintering Ice Spikes, uh, they hit a crazy number of times, have a really high base crit chance, uh, and they, they debuff for spells in general. Um, I still haven't done all the signs I want to do with splintering ice spikes, but they're, they're the ones that interest me the most. The only brands of ice spike that I would say are a little less noteworthy are storming, just because the, the damage isn't great, um, that I know of, and uh, impaling. Impaling was notable the first couple weeks of the game because it was hitting more times than it was supposed to. Screwy hitboxes, but in a beneficial way. But, uh, almost all ice spikes are good in some way or another. Like a lightning go to damage spell on the level of those three. Lightning go to damage spell on the level of those three. Um, it'd be Dazzler most likely. Uh, I haven't messed around with it properly, but Reviver has some pretty good looking stats. I don't know if it would outdo an actual Arc Torrent once charged. That, that requires some looking into. Melda, can you not? It's like the fourth one today. It's still spawn. Wonderland's go to game. So glad about the recent patch. How it uh, revitalized my love for the game. Yo, me too. I've done more build crafting in this game, like fresh concepts or twists on concepts I've been doing in the last three weeks than I have in the last two months. I think Reviver's cooldown is so low. The Reviver's cooldown used to be very long, and then DLC three they they buffed it. 
Arc Torrents definitely have a shorter cooldown than Reviver. But our Reviver has a much higher damage than a simple cast Arc Torrent gets. Now, I don't know about channeling Arc Torrent. And another potential difference is if Reviver gets area damage, because some Arc Torrents don't, that would also be good. But I haven't done any Reviver formula testing, so. Avix drop. Already? Hmm. Okay. Channeled our torrents were serviceable on C35, C50 in my experience. So that would mean they'd work up through um C61 now without any um gear swaps. Now that gear is easier to get, you could take them higher. This is a max swing speed pickaxe. Crit stats could be better though. And Vampire Hilt, that's why I'm leaving it. I bugged out my hammer. Down me. Down me. There we go. It's been a while since I used the spell calls on lightning. That'd be Cloud or Shark Torrents, yeah. My experience, they were decent, extremely sustainable without much investment. They had a channeling ca cast. Um, early in the game's life, they did knock those channeling Cloud Burst Arc Torrents down a peg. Um, But they're still good. I just would no longer consider them on the level of Ice Spikes, which they arguably were in some situations at one point. I think I remember that. Uh, I fixed them hitting multiple times, right? I might be misremembering. Uh, the multiple times hitting thing, they did with impaling ice spikes, they fixed. I don't remember precisely what they did with uh, Arc Torrents, other than just a straight damage reduction um, for the channeling ones. There was some behavioral change. It's been a while. I don't remember. Theodore, huh? I mean, it's not a Melda, but still don't want it. Hey, Don, how you doing? I have moon orbs now, though. The channel ones early on in the game came out for early end game. Um, Enter if you dare. <laughs> that's what I had in. Pretty much every spell slot of most of my builds that I was playing before the game came out. I was using Cloudburst, Arc Torrents. I even was using a blue one. Check one yesterday, 38.6 second cooldown. I That one definitely wasn't Cloudburst, because Cloudburst, Arc Torrents are like an 8 second cooldown.
Keep in mind, Cloudburst changes the mechanics. Bonding ones have a lengthy cooldown for some reason. Those are the, um, the, like, frozen orb acting ones, right? that arcs nearby targets. How are those damage-wise? I don't think I've ever used one of those seriously. Oh, they're the Dazzler acting ones. Okay, they act like Dazzlers? <laughs> that sounds... Good. But considering Dazzler exists, I can't imagine there's a a real use case in comparison. Twenty spells some of us haven't tried some. You know what category most people just haven't messed around with? Elemental Blasts. Like, there's so much going on in Elemental Blasts, and most people I know have never even used them, like, a single time. We'll use them for Axie Blades. It's really good for that, never for damage, so I don't know. That's fair. I just imagine most homing Autobahn spells have trouble hitting the last Aegis. It wouldn't surprise me if they did have trouble. Dazzler just better with way shorter cooldown. Makes sense. They gave the Dazzler a direct buff with DLC 3. It was probably already better, and then they buffed it more. This is where Barbalod, even a situational swap for one, would be the wise play. Because it'll allow me to just damage Redmore regardless of what resists he decides to roll. If I don't do that, then it's just not happening. Morning, Manic Geek. How you doing? I 
I could also just contagion fish. Like anytime there's an ad next to Redmore and just shoot them with a stab matic pretty much guarantee a contagion spread. But I could also just shoot Redmore with a stab matic at that point. New feature? Yeah, I'll have to, um... I'll have to relog my game so I can also get the new vendor. The new vendors. Really like the consuming elemental blast. Use one for a while on my hammer circuit to get flying enemies down to me. I ended up swapping it out for soak spell for more formula. For a while, I ended up using um, colliding eruptions, which are um, an AOE knockdown centered around you. It was really good for knocking Iclops out of the sky. I use that a lot uh, around launch. Notes come out then. You can hit exclamation point hotfix to see. Sparblow do exactly. Card just has a chance to make crossbolts refund damage. Doesn't seem that useful. Um, so it's got uh, another effect on it. Barbalode makes it so you have a chance when you hit an enemy with a crossbolt stuck in them for a ricochet to happen uh, to another nearby enemy. Now that ricochet um, takes the element of the gun in your hand, uh, but it bases itself off the damage that you did with that hit that caused the ricochet, not the crossbolt that went in, the hit that caused it. So you could potentially put a crossbolt in an enemy and then hit them for a billion damage with like a spirit swarm tick or something, right? If you trigger Barbalode with that tick of damage, then you get a ricochet that uses that base of a billion damage and then double dips elemental bonuses, global bonus, conditional bonus, all that. It is a double dip off of that into multi-target. Um... So Barbalode can turn anything into multi-target, as long as you have crossbolts somewhere in your kit. And the reason why that's particularly good against Redmorn is because Redmorn's heads all have their own hitboxes. So you can Barbalode from Redmorn to Redmorn. You can play the angles from Redmorn to Redmorn, etc. Card says really undersell it. Yeah. Barbalode is one of the most powerful things in the game. Um, to the point where you could take a Blight Caller with Spirit Swarm and Barbalode. And those two things working together uh, with enough RNG is enough to clear Chaos 500. Not 100, 500. It is uh, a case of theoretically infinite damage, providing you have enough targets on, on the field. Theoretically infinite. Because you need perfect RNG to achieve that. It's a snowballing thing. So you need, say, you need to trigger Barbalode with the swarm, and then have that Barbalode hit the second target, then apply a dot. That would make a new swarm, and then you would need that new swarm to barbalode to another target, apply a new higher dot, and so on and so forth. If that keeps happening, your damage just continues to go up. And you can do that with lots of tech. You can do that with uh, Spirit Swarm barbalode, you can do that with Plague Storm, uh, you can do that with, um, if you have 
echo and then bonus elements piggybacking on that echo applying a dot. Um, there's lots of ways to achieve that, but Barbalode is unique because it's the one that you can put on any class. And you need to pair it with something for that to hit the theoretically infinite stage. Uh, but it is something that goes on any class. It's not like Spirit Swarm and Plague Storm are both Blight Caller exclusive. So this keeps Keep Rod Barbalode on Redmore and kills him before your feet touch the ground. It's hilarious. Nice feature this week, lots of crystals. Yeah, after I spend these crystals, I'll uh, I'll restart my game so I get the new vendors and stuff as well. Yeah, there's a bad egg. Safe space. I mean, I guess I won't say no. I was hoping for Roid at least. There's Barbalood. I don't really need to care much about the quality of it for the purpose I am picking it up for. Um, which does mean I can hit for more bad eggs, hopefully get a better one. Offix already on. I doubt it. But the featured sometimes... Sometimes they do these things at weird times. Like, some, sometimes they'll deploy the featured early. Sometimes they'll deploy a, a DLC boss phase early. It's happened a few times. It's weird. But multiple people have said the new featured is in, so... I may as well play it. I'm Aki. Hi, Aki. I'm Quag. How you doing? Red having so many monitors and cables. <laughs> no, you don't. People have been telling you you having that many monitors that you don't even use is a bad idea for years. It's never stopped you. Don't be a quitter. Peace, love, and quag chag. More than my favorite grouping of degenerates. Hey, we are... We are generates. I don't know what that means. <laughs> How you doing, Foster? Years I never had to move them. That's fair. For geriatrics, true, Hawken. So true. Every once in a while, I'll see something on like social media where it's like, "Hey, this came out this year," and I'll, I'll be like, "Oh yeah, that was only a couple years ago." I, I found myself mentally doing that about something that came out in 2010. 2010 was fucking 12 years ago. Almost 13 years ago. Like, hang on. That doesn't... That doesn't... I, I don't like that. That doesn't make me feel good. Honestly, now that I found out I'm actually a generate, I'm really fucking fantastic. <laughs> Love to hear it. Oh yeah, I should roll the bad egg first. Oh, 
Honestly, duration there, not the worst thing. I'm gonna try that out. I'm gonna see how that feels. Are you prepared? We'll see. You'll be impressed with how I managed to make this look. I believe it. No, it's still the same feature for me. I've been jebaited. Oh well. One more for the soul fire. See you later, Death. Hearing you guys talk about your joints and shit makes me feel like it'd be a good idea for me to wake up yoga. Just doing stretches in the morning every day, just basic stretches, that'll save you a lot of pain later on. And I'm saying that as someone who, like, exercised anywhere from four to six days a week every week from when I was eight or nine, about nine, to when I was 21, 22, 22. So from nine to 22, uh, and then I stopped doing that. Then by the time I turned 23, I was like, why can't I move? It happened that early. At 23, I was like, hang on, I can't fucking move. What is this? And now at almost 28, I'm just like, movement's overrated. I can just sit in my chair. That's fine. That works for me. Unfortunate. Forgot about the second barrel. I want to redo this whole room anyway. You want a diamond gauntlets build IRL? True. You're saying don't exercise in the first place? Yeah, because then you won't know what you're missing out on. It's a good point, Tenor. 5,000 IQ strats. Last thing I stretched was the expiration date on my milk. Did did that get followed up by you stretching your budget on a plumber? I to take from you about today's topics. I haven't even looked at it yet. It's not out, Foster. And ooh. why do I have to have a spicy take? There's, there's literally nothing for me to have a take on. Taco Bell, cheapest plumber you can get. So you're 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 fighting fire with fire, except you're expelling fire. No, it's here. Pretty much rotations. Let's look. Yep, we got week seven of um, Chaos in the World. Buckethead again. We had Buckethead once before, right? Yeah. Um, Fronstrosity. 
new featured it mentions but the new featured isn't here for me so it must not be deployed yet i'll be able to check again in 40 minutes i'll just give a spicy take um i i don't mind it just being rotations because we're still only two weeks after a major patch that made the entirety of the endgame better. Like, that, that is me grasping at straws. I couldn't come up with anything spicy. There's just nothing to comment on. Found it much harder to get fit a second time. It's kind of demoralizing knowing how far off I am from what I was. Yo, I can relate to that so fucking hard. Oh fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> fucking singularity. <laughs> I got it this time. <laughs> Just seeing the barrel flying towards me slowly. Not that a comment on be considered a spicy take. By whom? I don't know what spicy means in this context. I'm so confused. I'm just gonna throw more hammer. You have to talk trash. What? Yeah, Curse Wood just feels nice here. I think if my bad egg had a roid, I'd feel better about it. Hey Stomp, how you doing? Seeing the barrel move slowly towards you while the first couple notes of the Ultra Instinct theme plays. I had a moment like that yesterday. Um. So I was playing some Back for Blood co-op. Fun fact, yesterday was the one year anniversary of Back for Blood. Didn't even know it, but me, Lazy, and Rune played uh, co-op for a few hours, and it was a good time. There's one where an ogre just, like, reaches up and spawns and climbs up onto a cliff in front of me. Ogre's one of the boss enemies in that game. Just, like, right in front of me. I'm like, ah, uh, oh, oh, frick, oh, um, oh, oh, darn. Uh, I said lots of clean swears. Um... But yeah, I heard the Ultra Instinct theme in my head, for sure. Has it already one year old? Because time is weird, not HP. But yeah, Back for Blood's been out for one year. One year yesterday. Imagine saying clean swears. <laughs> Listen, I have never said a bad word in my entire life. It just hasn't happened. No cap, I'm wearing a cap, idiot. <laughs> Silly not a spee. That's it, stream will explode now. It's fine. Everything's fine. How you doing, Pupty? Good to see you. Quag clean. What would that emote even be? 
<laughs> I like the concept. My first thought for some reason was just Blight dressed up like Mr. Clean. Which seems like such a niche emo that I don't think anyone would use it. Maid dress? I like that one too. Bar soap in his mouth. Shower cap surrounded by bubbles. Play with a towel around him and in his hair easy. Oh, the, the, the towel twist thing. I like it. Quag Chad, but maid dress. Heaven, you can't have more food. So this cat has been screaming at me for about 12 hours. Um, because he wants more food. But, cat, you eat too much food. I'm, I'm weaning you down to a more reasonable amount. You're heckin' chonkers. Heckin' chonkers. You've reached the size of people say, here come that boy, in between saying, meow. He's always been a big cat. Like, large. But now he's large. <laughs> Feed the chonk. Just give him a lasagna. Feed him in pets. Oh lord, he coming. Here's the sigil tech at work. You can just put a sigil in and blow yourself up with a, a barrel. That's the most important part. You need to make sure that you, you pull in a barrel. That's what I've been doing wrong. Common mistake. See, everything I do, I do for a reason. And that's that's just part of my process. See, it was a tactical respawn, so I go over there. So I could just... My, my Fate Maker gets their steps in. Barrel makes sure the spores are fully obliterated. Precisely. Gotta be sure. No good contagion spread there. It's sad.
that was satisfying. It got thrown up and then I smacked it back down. The voice lines that sound kind of weird. So there's two sets. Uh, one set is coming from my character, the other one is coming from the Curse Wit. Curse Wit just kind of babbles weirdly. I don't know half of what it's saying. But if I remember correctly, the, uh, the Grim voice type and the Curse Wit have the same voice actor? So, fun to hear the same person deliver two totally different things at the same time. Never quit one before. Yeah. Talking items aren't generally loved in these games. They're rather annoying, but... Curse what I've just become accustomed to at this point. Make a Creed theme bill, use the curse with the sound theme. Ah, so it's like you have a voice in your head? Hmm. Hey, Stump. I thought I said hi already, but uh, hi. Good to see you. How you doing? Pixies your guns with wings. Which one's better? Uh, where do stats come from? So it depends on what kind of build you're doing, uh, Pollock. So, Shrikes are gun damage. They don't count as companions. They don't get companion damage. They're just guns that fly around. <laughs> like a Gary farmer? Oh, no. Um, but Shrikes are notable because they can apply cross bolts. Um, and they're just on the higher end of what gun DPS is capable of. Pixies are notable because, um, <laughs> excuse me, sneezes. Particularly Fear Not Pixies are, they're damage source spell, so they'll trigger things like Double Knot, um, and they scale up with spell boosts, which obviously spell shot gets a lot of while also getting gun damage. Um, the Pixies will also count towards your companions, so they'll stack things like Faithful Thralls, a Brutal Stampede. They get companion damage in their formula. So Pixies have a very expansive damage formula, but they don't deal gun damage. So depending on which skills and effects you're trying to trigger, one could be better than the other. Hey, Tujella, how you doing? Um... Like, for example, if you're doing Spore Warden stuff, or Blight Caller stuff, uh, Spore Warden having play the angles, Blight Caller having Geist in the shell, well, Shrikes can trigger those. But Fear Not Pixies can't, because they're spells. Um, Fear Not Pixies will trigger things, trigger things like uh, Graveborn's Blast Gasp, Spell Shots, Double Knot. Um, now, you could go with What Not Pixies, but those are effectively just weaker versions of Shrikes. So I'd say the biggest thing that affects whether Pixies or Shrikes are better for you is going to be your class choice. In 
Your man, thank you. No problem. Struggling on a build? What's the build? You did say hi, you're getting scammed. Scammed? Rude. I'll just go around the back of the building with that puzzle on that map. Less tight turns for me. Oh, your way is probably easier. It's just sometimes I do things weirdly. <laughs> sometimes I just learn things incorrectly and then never bother to correct. Like, I never learned how to whistle properly. I still can't quite consistently do it. Um, I whistle in reverse. It's like sucking in air instead of blowing it out. That's just how I learned. <laughs> I'm a weird, weird human sometimes. Same? Okay, not alone. The big suck. So I learned to whistle too, now I go both ways. Oh, interesting. Noted. Whistle through the fire and flames. Make for some really fast whistling tunes, just breathe and make noise. Sounds like a useful skill. <laughs> Accordion status. Clawbringer Berserker doing what? Like, that's just what classes you are. That's not what build you're doing. Like, what what are you what are you trying to kill things with? Morning, barely. I uh, do actual work this morning. It works a travesty, I tell you. It sounds like a crime, Jester. I'm not okay with that. Oh, yeah, I don't have Exe Blade anymore. How do I do this? Guns for Boston. Guns for bossing, I'm assuming what that means. Um, Lazy Data's Hammer Zerker build from way back, still up to date, still optimal, with some slight enchant differences, I suppose, but like, yeah, just that. Hasn't changed. That build still works from C20.
I guess Livewire Banshee would be the play here. Seen the mod someone did in Trombone Champ to add that song to the game. It's the most magical thing gaming seen in some time. <laughs> this is the second trombone related message that has really grabbed my attention from you, Manic Geek. I'm here just here to spread the good word. Understandable. Alright, really gloop? That should be a kill. Gloob's slower without Xy Blade. Um, maybe I keep a Banshee for that. Oh yeah, I don't have Xy Blade now. Um I need to actually physically get close now, I guess. Unless I can do that. Axie Blade is so rough on some of these. Arc should be the smoothest. for this. The last mage in the room? Yeah.
Do I not need FTS there? Nah, it's still nice to have FTS. Um, shit, which pickaxe did I have equipped? 18150? Yeah. I think I still prefer the other spec. Big bonk. <laughs> Um, so this is the, uh, the hammer throw build that I've been doing, except, uh, with an alt spec. Uh, currently, instead of my normal approach of going down to Executioner's Blade, taking four and thousand cuts, single point sneak attack, um, instead I've gone down to get six points instead of the normal three in, in awe, allowing me to get more crit chance, and also more of awe's shrine crit damage, means my hammer and dots are more powerful, but I lose Executioner's Blade. Um, so I've just kind of shifted my power elsewhere. Um, this allows me to have a higher crit chance in, in, in general. Um, but I think I prefer the other spec. It lets me have a higher crit damage pickaxe um, without regearing differently, but I think I'm going to change back, honestly. This is a copy of the other save, but I'm just going to respec anyway. Um, I'd rather have with the 21... Pickaxe, or maybe I could get away with a 19. I'm gonna try the 19 140. And we'll respec. Oh, this is too many crystals for me to spend, so, uh, yeah. It's a little rusty with trombone. Mm. I understand what you're getting out there. More fire rate is faster to the Raider spin. Is that, is that worth? No, I don't think so. Because the spell damage basically useless. I'd rather have even the small amount of global I get from Swift Death. One sneak attack is optimal. That's so weird. That's so weird. And that leaves me two points, max out, swift death, and thousand cuts. A point in follow-up wouldn't be the worst idea, but meh. Okay. Now we see how much crit I have. 77.5. 87.5. Gotta see what it is with awe on. Just uh ninety point two. Ninety eight I should maybe actually plan my crit chance around... I'm gonna actually plan my crit chance around not having Wyvern, because the Wyvern can die.
Damage source of the base warrior spike, uh, melee or gear. Me melee. It is melee. So it's quite good. Just waiting for the wyvern to die now. Of course it's not going to when I want it to. Fine, I know I'm gonna max strength anyway. Let's do that for now. We'll play until I see the Wyvern die and then I'll spend the rest of my hero points. Now, I could mat this out without field testing, but that's effort. Let's picture what my setup's looking like at the moment, general, because I don't want to see it. We'll play until the wyvern dies. The wyvern, quite chat. It do be like that. Whoops. It's fine. Everything's fine. It might not be fine. The wyvern was like, no, I don't die, you die. <laughs> well, I haven't heard he said it could die. In <laughs> oh yeah, but you die first. <laughs> it was right. You know, it, it was right. Oh, now you show up. Call an ambulance, but not for me. It's so wild to me that um, Ichigo actually does that shit in Bleach. Like, that's not just the meme someone came up with. That's something he actually just does. Like, he's about to get into a fight, so he just calls, he's like, yeah, I need an ambulance. How, how many ambulances? And then he starts counting the guys he's fighting. He's an absolute fucking menace. Main character of Bleach, for anyone who doesn't know. He's an absolute menace. Waiting for this wyvern to die so I can invest my hero points. Yeah, did the barrel get you? No, the barrel got me though. Oh wait, it died. It died. Pog. Pog. We'll go with that much. Okay, yeah, so with my two Frostburns, with Awe and no Wyvern, it's over 100.
Why does Wyvern need to die first? Because I want to see how much crit chance I have with six stacks of uh, Brutal Stampede instead of seven. New Bleach Star? It did. It did. That's a mosquito. Two in Blast Gasp. Area damage, all damage. The ability crit chance sucks, but like... Back build changed. Yeah, back to Xy Blade for now. Just because I prefer it. Um, It's just more practical. Hey, Dark Flame. How you doing? Another anime news, Hunter x Hunter is coming back to Shonen Jump. Yeah, Hunter x Hunter is one of those very intermittent series. You guys see that the Pokemon anime is like stalling production for the first time in decades? Because they're just so understaffed. is having a uh, staffing crisis as of late. Still on you? I wasted a little too much time. That's okay. Um, new feature should be out now. Let's see. I won't have the new vendors, but I should have the new featured, hopefully. From the theory of crafting a melee berserker blight collar build makes use of Plague Storm to should be damage over a wide area. Any thoughts? Um, Plague Storm with Blood of the Fallen is a good combo. You could uh, work in either Theurge to reduce your downtime further, but with Blood of the Fallen, it's not really necessary. You could just use a, a Barba Load and then uh, have crazy damage snowballing. Yeah, that's a new feature. Hi, Jake. How goes the jaking today?
Chat, look how cat my cat is. Look how cat. Cat, much cat. Very well. You could stop shooting me and come down here. That'd be nice. Or I can do that. Slam too early. Did they change that? They might have. Hmm. I swear you could. Scalwag? Uh, not currently. This is a wrap scallion. Uh, so it doesn't have the cross bolts, but it has a, a higher blade. I, I've taken to using a tooth raider more of the time because. One shot of a Tooth Raider applies 9 5% cross bolts with 8 second duration. Um, and that's just more of an overall impact on your damage if you were to only do one or the other. But if I'm going all out, now I just... 3 Tooth Raider shots, switch to Rap Scallion, and that's the most you're going to get. But there's some targets that's not relevant against. For example, if the the target's too far, then you don't have time to to soak. Like, if the target's too far, you don't have time to do all that before soak wears off. So embark in the first room. Should I look for on a Scalawag and a melee orientated? Um, melee cross bolts is the biggest thing. It can also be times two, and it can be any element. So, for example, if you're a Blight Caller, having a Poison one is good because it will be able to apply a Bog Down for you. If you're a Berserker, having <laughs> having a Cryo one is good because it'll progress you towards Icebreaker. Um, in all other scenarios, you're likely looking at it not really mattering too much. Dark Magic gives you a very, very, very tiny amount of healing overall. Not enough to truly care about. No Hotfix Live 1 should be live already. I'm playing the new Featured right now. 12 noon Eastern is uh, usually their Hotfix deployment time. And this week's Hotfix is just rotation of the event and Featured, so should all be good to go. Dark Magic Life Stealing should be increased by, I don't know, 30-40% make it feel worth? No. It shouldn't. Dark Magic healing on spells and melee should be corrected to work as it does for guns. And then they don't need to change anything else about it. Yesterday I discovered there's also Hyperius SMGs, 40% melee could possibly be more convenient by not suffering the animation delay. Ooh. Um, are they... Which kind is it, Stone Swan? Are they Spriggans? Because I totally want that. I guess I go Nullify.
doing an all curse run just to see what curses are in the featured. Can't pull up and thinking up for damage output. Hold poison scowl. I could play storm active. So kind of me and thwack them with banshee. That would work well. Um, salt and battery might work out a little bit better, but like banshee is still gonna be towards the ceiling of what you can do. Non magic barrel. Forgot what it was called. Okay, I'll just hit SMG bunny and look through. Thank you, thank you. But back to the dark magic thing. They don't need to buff dark magic at all. One of the things that makes dark magic good is that it's not lifesteal. Lifesteal is completely free, doesn't require any investment or effort, and just bleh. We have a whole stat called dark magic efficiency that makes your dark magic healing better. You can always take more of that. And the reason why dark magic healing is not significant on melee or spell builds is because it does not work properly at all on melee and spells. The reason why it would not be of significant value with my gun on my melee build is because I'm not a gun build, so I'm not doing enough damage to get the healing. Not because the healing isn't working, just because I'm not doing enough damage. Car insurance claims pain. Okay, it doesn't like Corrupted Plate Mill, it does offer a lot of good healing. It's not that I don't like Corrupted Plate Mill. I, I do like Corrupted Plate Mill. Uh, it's still my go-to armor on my Mist Dancer build, my Stabo Spore gun build. It's just that Corrupted Plate Mill is almost always a damage down, which I don't generally consider worth the healing. But it sometimes is worth that. And it's because the mechanics of Corrupted Plate Mill Dark magic bonus elements on, like, dots are, um, better for healing than dark magic melee and spells, is the short explanation. There's an entire, um, doc on dark magic mechanics by Stone Swan. I believe it's just exclamation point dark magic for the command. Corrupt play mills wonderful on gun builds for healing. Mm-hmm. I don't dislike it at all. It's just, uh... It often gets attributed to a damage increase that it almost never provides. Anarchy. If there's also Crit Connoisseur in this, then I might do Maker Runs with Sapomatic and see how fast we can push that. Pogged all over the place. Just about pogged my pants. Oh no. Sick amnesia is burst spore, points an icebreaker and cold snap. All damage movement speed. That's sick. 
Stealing Pog my pants. That's pretty good, yeah. Misinterpreted that as play no bad. It's understandably what I said is more of a mouthful. But as with most things with builds in, in this game, it's nuanced. Plate mail is a situational pick, more so than most other armors. Most other armors. How damn dot nasty spill? Ugh. I guess I'm dealing with nasty spill for a room. Or a couple rooms. Get some sleep, have a great day. Thanks for hanging out, Hawken. I really appreciate it. Hey, Atreus, how you doing? Epogulation is normal and healthy. I agree. Makes the Pandemicium good for Mistancer? Pandemicium? Nothing. Uh, we're talking about corrupted plate mail. Pandemicium? Nothing. I would not use Pandemicium on Mistancer. Uh, that's what I meant. Uh, more play the angles. Also, the healing is pretty good. Um, and Spore Sabo is multi-class with no healing otherwise. It's all coming from uh, Warden Chance, Armor Passive, Skeep if you're running that, Fortifying Sigil if you're running that. Um, but outside of dark magic healing, that's, that's all you'd be getting. So, that. Okay, I'm treating you today. It's good, it's good. Uh, we've been testing out different specs for the hammer throwing. Going a little bit glassier today, hence the title. And it's been going well. Um, eventually decided that I do prefer the Axie Blade setup to the 6 out of 3 Aw. Um, just because Axie Blade smooths out so many boss kills. Plus 2 all Chemical Agent, holy shit. There's Gloop. I was going to say, did I miss Gloop? No, it's in this one. This location is out of the way. But, uh, green in the first room, blue in the last room, yellow in whichever one I was in for that. No, don't hit the stairs. Come on, get some altitude. Believe in you. Week's feature, like super extended three bosses, which is a boss run. I'm I'm in this week's feature right now. It's just a regular run. I think. Actually, no, that that's a good question. So the notes say Banshee Vorkanar Parasite. So I guess it is a long one. If the notes are accurate. Normally with those they space out the raid boss things um more instead of putting them all at the beginning. But I guess this means I can just turn my brain off. Yeah, good shout. I hadn't even realized.
Ooh, we took half his health with a dot before the phase even started. Ooh, we almost killed Waster before his immunity. That's with Nullify as well. Apologies, Maudie only, because data plan. Ah, no, I, I understand. I will... Yeah, no, this is the end. I don't know what they they meant with the notes there. This seems to just be a regular ass run. Featured. Have I been fighting a bunch of bosses? Seems to be a regular ass run. Beefy shield you got there? Yeah, you know, I, I'd be, I'd be pretty screwed if it broke. I think the notes are just wrong. Which I'll slide a note over to Two K about that in just a minute. Either the notes are wrong or the push are wrong feature. Yeah. Could be either. Bit unfortunate, excited to see Banshee because be able to farm some upgrades for my sword. Yeah. I always like to see Banshee in the featured. Oh. Well, I didn't want to. I didn't want to shoot that guy anyway. Axie Blade's so much smoother. Sorry, Bark. I, I was going to do your mechanics, but I kind of kept messing them up. It's my bad. <laughs> but I shoot the guy. I just absolutely stormtrooper him. Mm.
Thanks for making that take way longer than it needed to nullify. It's pretty fucking rude of you. Yeah, I should switch to caustic there, I think. This is fine. One second, make her kill go go. <laughs> this isn't blunder. It's just not set up for that. This is uh, this is hammer throwing. But we do take out a uh, a lightning salt and battery for maker specifically. Also, we did have nullify lowering our damage. Didn't take any blessings. I could get that down to like a five second kill. Don't forget the SMG bunny. Thank you. I had already forgotten. Thank you. Oh, slow run. But it's still very efficient, even if you take it kind of like a pretty casual pace. 20 minute run for 30k crystals. That's good. And I didn't restart my game, so I don't have the updated vendors. SMG bunny. Alright, we're looking for Hyperius SMG with 40% or not 40%, 40% melee. Should be possible. Also take any decent uh, cryo nightshades I get for another thing. Send a throwable hole. Shame this thing does self damage now. There was one. What, with 40% melee? That's 20% on a nightshade. Oh, there it is. It is a spriggan. Huh. Okay, I see it. I have too much shit in my inventory. I have one more body rune than I need, right? I have a copy of that elsewhere. They don't hold the self damage, so I was going down a bunch the other day. Yeah, as of, uh, I think DLC 3 coming out, it started doing self damage. Magic Barrel 2? Yeah. So, melee attachment here, that should be 15%. Where's the other 25 coming from? I guess the other 25 comes from the magic barrel. So this is giving 25, and then that's giving 15, likely. Unless that's giving the whole 40, which would be weird and out of line with how other ones work. Or, okay, never mind, what's happening here? Can you just get two of these? Is it two 20 blades? It might just be two 20 blades in the same spot. <laughs> get the effects of weapons bonuses even if you aren't using that gun? No, you don't. <laughs> yeah, this is weird, right? This looks like a botched save edit. But you saw I just picked it up off the ground. <laughs> Part system in this game is fucking weird. So I was there to make sure it's uh, only the most dedicated of dipshits use the weapon to its truest potential. I mean, it, it's worth noting Ambihextrous is one of the only action skills that works while you're down. Like, you can cast both your spells while you're down, so you could just make that part of the build. And go Chillmonger, Blades of Glory, Ambihextrous with a throwable hole. Either we need to play around with that Magic Barrel attempt to go Gun Melee Hybrid. Did they ever put back the Poison Barrel um, 
buff they did? Or would it just be better to go probably fire? Or lightning for amped up and soaked? Maybe lightning then. Or are you thinking of doing like the cryo one for the gun? Just friggin' like the actual gun. Talking with Lazy about uh, Cryo Spriggan versus Cryo Nightshade, and um, Nightshade is kind of clearly ahead now, but that doesn't make these bad, it just makes them less good. Imagine Cryo could also roll 40. Provided the Cryo version of the barrel also has the melee bonus, yeah, that would make sense. Don't forget the Diamond Gauntlets too. You could do diamond gauntlets there. You could do amnesia though, because you're damaging yourself all the time. Does amnesia trigger while you're down if you continue to damage yourself? That's the question. Does it trigger from throwable hole at all? Is throwable hole considered status damage? I think it gets bonus elements, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's not status damage with how bonus elements in this game vary. A lot of questions there. There you go, there's another build concept to try. <laughs> Ooh, another... Good thing about this is you could use shell casing ring with this. Uh, Rapscaling locked you out of shell casing ring because you couldn't have low ammo. You had to either like completely break it, but with with this you could just shoot it to low ammo and use shell casing. That's a big deal. That's a really big deal, actually. So, like, Big Mag. If I do that. might let me move some dexterity points out. Might keep it as is anyway, but... Yeah. That's more melee damage. More melee crit damage. Simply more damage. So we've had the age of the Hyperion shotgun stat stick. Welcome to the age of the Hyperion SMG stat stick. Sorry, Hyperius SMG stat stick. <laughs> Beautiful. Feels weird to hear, doesn't it? It's definitely weird. But 
but I don't have to deal with the animation delay. Which is a very good thing. Look back at that burst stab on Amnesia I got for Dreadwind build. Does have three of the stab of skull. Uh, follow up. And two iron skull, melee crit chance, area damage, all damage. That's still really good. Yeah, those are really good passives. Arguably perfect passives. That's a nice upgrade. Empirical evidence, Hyperion's the best manufacturer. I stand Hyperion so hard. Just cause Hyperion shotguns in BL3 changed my life. Literally. Yeah, we gotta we gotta tell Lazy about this. All area damage effect. So initially, our impression of area damage in this game is it was uh, is less impactful. But no, it's just less accessible. Area damage affects like almost everything in this game. Most of the action skills are area damage. Uh, almost all spells are area damage. Spirit swarm. Um, any splash guns. There's a lot of things that are area damage. If you had exclamation point damage, uh, all the formulas outlined there uh, indicate which things do get area uh, of the things in there. Lazy just took a live wire. Lazy's been using Rapscallion for uh, his boss melts. This has the same blade as a Rapscallion, but it just uh, allows you to do shell casing ring stuff, which Rapscallion doesn't, and it has shorter animations, so faster to swap. So it's just better. Scalawag still has its niche, but now it's like, it's not Scalawag or Rapscallion or Tooth Raider, it's... Scalawag or Spriggan or Toothraider. Ideally, Toothraider and Spriggan. What did I miss? SMG, 40% blade. And because it doesn't use the heat mechanics, um, it has faster swap animations, and you can do shell casing ring stuff with it. See you later. Sounds good, Snow Spawn. See you later.
So awkward thing about going shell casing this way is that when I don't have low ammo and I'm using this tooth aerator, my crit chance isn't guaranteed anymore. I think that's fine. I think that's fine. Yeah, this feels good. I'm making a face. Sure about that? <laughs> Up of the gods are this feels good comment. Really feels that way. Someone just took great personal offense to me having fun. Which, in fairness, happens to me often. That was quite a volley. Oh. I guess that's still happening. Oh, you're doing that over here now. There we go. Not listen, I didn't say it builds OP, it will defeat our queen as fast as other builds clear lesser bosses. If I went from the shadows and did XC Blade, then yeah, it'd, it'd be that fast. Laser Hand can clear her that fast. Provided you have decent aim, just a regular gun build, you know, fire sword explosion. Spirit Swarm stuff can clear her fast. Just most action skills are physically incapable of hitting her in the first phase. Like, I didn't even try to hammer throw her on phase one because it just doesn't work. So, when my entire build is that, I have to use the second string stuff. Honestly, not bad for a melee build of Imelda. It's part of why I really stand behind XC Blade. Because you could also stab a Matic instead, which I ended up doing a mix of both. But Executioner's Blade allows you to hit things you can't otherwise hit while also being supplementary DPS and diversifying your elements. Like, it's just, it's too good to not take.
Sad Ghostblade noises, yeah. Ghostblade, Storm Dragon's Judgment, Cleansing Flames, Dire Sacrifice, uh, Feral Surge, Dreadwind. None of those can hit Phase 1 Imelda. Phase one melt is a myth. It certainly feels that way sometimes. Looking for a roid bad egg. Come on. Ascended Master Rune with health. That's, uh, Big Deathless right there. Double Brimming Purple. Nice. Featured. See how long a regular run of this featured without raid bosses takes. that they're spawning up there and refusing to fly. Kinda complicates my whole thing.
Mage stop. Feeling smooth. The reason why I'm shooting this thing so much is because um, I do need to trigger the fire part of awe every 12 seconds, which I'm getting through a point of both the fire. That does require me shooting. But I also need to stay at low ammo to keep my shell casing ring on. So... a bit of juggling. Maybe, maybe I do want Firebolt so I can afford to shoot less. I can go 5 here, 5 here, 4, 1, open up to here. Uh, but then I still... I'd have to give up point in thousand cuts or swift death. I'd probably give up the swift death point. Swift death point for firebolt. Seems logical. Cause that'll give my wyvern a whole separate attack it can do, which is always fire. That's why it's useful. Alternatively, I could go body rune and then not have to shoot at all. Yeah, I gotta see what parts this thing can get, so I can get a more optimal version. Because, uh... I think I want one with faster reload speed. Smaller mag would also let me... 
maybe get to low ammo faster. So yeah, not going particularly fast. This run still feels fast. So I want to try Caustic Hilt here. I'm swinging less. Yeah, sub 10 is still good. Um, I could go for the 18-150. Like, if I run this, or not that, this. I could run the 18150. Stick with that over there. Yeah, that's without awe. <laughs> that's still capped. So run this one. See how that works out. One more run. Good boss run this time. I can always just switch every 12 seconds and uh, get fire all with the Tooth Raider. guarantee you with this. But oh well. And 
and then I take the last point, thousand cuts. Yeah. Okay. So I'm trading one rank in Swift Death to get Firebolt, which is 10% gun damage. Ultimately, I don't care much about that. But more importantly, it gives the Wyvern the Fire Splat attack, which helps in awe upkeep without me having to shoot. Um, and the fire part of awe is Shrine Crit damage, which is very valuable. Exactly 100. <laughs> That's satisfying. That is so satisfying. Oh, love it. Um, but the thing is, if I want to plan around the wyvern being dead, then I should still take more. I'll round that off to 10%. Actually, I won't. So, it's 6.9% per stack. So, if I take 8%, if I take 8% from Dex here, then that puts me slightly over what I need, but any overflow is technically still helping my dots. So it might not seem like we got much done today, but a lot of build optimizations happened. Tested a lot of theories, all regarding this one build. percent melee friggin that was phenomenal credit to stone swan as always has some interesting tech to share Loadouts look so weird. Yeah, I've got this blue quest reward sniper. 
I've got this uh, purple SMG for, for my melee build. Uh, I've got this rocket launcher and this this shotgun that shoots punches. <laughs> and a low level shield and a quest reward spell. You know, where's all the people who claim to love quest rewards being best in slot end game items? Where, where are those people at? Because Plus one to all chemical agent. Why would you do that game? Keep coming in clutch, save my life again. Ooh, drill, perfect. Make sure my stuff's reloaded. Axie Blade started doing work before I had time to finish setting up. Okay. I was running tasers. I think I could have gotten the one cycle there. Also running healing passive there. I could run global damage. Um, this could have a better enchant. I could have action skill start. I could have that enchant basically. Very happy with how this is turning out. Enough. Nope. Missed one tick. Hey, 
Hey, you're dead. What belly aching? You're dead. How does that way? How's the SMG working? Working great. Absolutely love it. Um, I no longer have to worry about. So this bug that's happening right now uh, happened a lot more often because of the longer swap. Uh, it happens much less often now, so the gameplay is just smoother. And that's without me using any of the benefits of like the actual gun. Like I'm sure I could come up with some sort of way to um, benefit significantly from having just more crit and better gun stats as a whole from a Spriggan than you get from a Rapscallion. Selecting element is going to be another thing that plays a role. But yeah, it's, it's just good. Feels good. I really want this snake stick. Like, with Spriggan being shell casing friendly, that makes me think we can afford to go even lower crit weapons for different interactions. Like, instead of pickaxe, could potentially go snake stick. Which is huge because snake stick hydras themselves are also getting damage formula, applying a chemical agent. Yet another outlet. Yeah, shell casing? Yeah. So, like, triple crit chance roll on a shell casing. All active. Let's see what that is. 89.6, or 89 times uh, 1.66. 147.74. So, 147.74% uh, percent melee crit from one ring. And you can have two of those. So, sure, let's throw that in. And you can have 59.3 from an armor passive. So, from just two rings and an armor passive, that's 354.78% melee crit. That's enough to get, like most things to auto crit. I think a 13% uh, crit chance snake stick might be in the running now. Because you can get a 13 140. Um, I haven't checked parts. I have to check more combos. You get a 13 140 snake stick. Um, and then each time you're swinging to apply warrior or caustic, um, and to stack up consec if you're running that, you just get the hydra there, which is spitting melee damage at range. Uh, the hydras do get companion boosts in their formula as conditional. They get area damage. That sounds good. Hey, Mocking Fun Days. Uh, in the hammer vein, is there any way to make a hammer zerker do big damage on the lightning hammer throw, specifically for blue raid boss and burned out type things? Um, not to the extent this is doing, because with hammer zerker, you don't get alchemical agent from the stabomancer tree. A big part of this build's power is the dots applied by this skill triggered off of the hammer. This triggers off of any melee. Uh, but another big part is Executioner's Blade, which gives us a way to apply melee damage to things that are otherwise out of our reach. Um, if you were to go Hammer Zerker, your only method of applying ranged melee to things that the hammer can't hit is Stabomatic. So it cuts down on your, your delivery methods. But you get a pretty good damage formula as a whole. Your hammer hit itself would be hitting harder with a Berserker tree than with a Stabomancer tree, but you wouldn't have this big dot, which is the bulk of my damage. 
So you could get it to kill basic enemies, for sure. Going much farther than that, I don't see it being feasible. It wouldn't be killing bosses. Yeah, that's a Tyrant's Truth Spore Claw. If I was doing Wildfire, that'd be like decent. But, hmm. Let's hit this for some Snake Sticks, hopefully. set after stream try to find the optimal spriggan send it's all in battery and it's not elemental which is about my luck if petty tantrum had a good crit damage i would actually want to run it on this because that'd be cool but like the crit damage is awful. Why why is it awful? Why does it gotta be like that? Like Petty Tantrum's worse than Ragnarok. Why? A glass hammer title with this. Oh, we're just dunking on bosses. Oh, 14130. Dunking on bosses with hammer throwing Aaron. I'll I'll do one more run. I wasn't gonna do one more run, but for you. For you, I'll do one more run. Let me just make an inventory slot. I'll mess around with that later. So, we're something of a squishy setup. We could be even squishier. I'm allowing myself to give up one damage passive here for healing and um, running a skeep when I could run a barbalode. Um, but. We have hammer throws and dots so powerful that we are very nearly killing Wastard before his immunity kicks in. There's the glass. Let's see I get out of here. Hostile bad apparently. There's still people running around saying that. Banshee. We can meme on Banshee. Can work with that. Oopsie. That was a dirty kill as well. Had better. Hammer throw. 
Hammer throw can't be good without Spell Blade Re. Are there people really out there saying that? Some Reddit parakeet, probably. You're not wrong. Survivability via damage. BO3 again. <laughs> Do be like that, Flip. I could make this tankier at the cost of some of the damage, but it's fun to play this way. And this build did get through a maker run. So, multiple maker runs, in fact. So, it's tanky enough. <laughs> I was hoping I'd launch myself. It worked. An elemental resistance is actually causing my problem here. Lysia resists shock. So my pickaxe is stronger against her than my hammer is. That's where the glass comes in. Wonderland's astronaut program shan't be denied. <laughs> right, that's apparently been fixed twice. I'm glad it's still in. I like it. It's a funny one. There we go. Shades of Skyrim's giant space program. That's timeless. Oh, Redmorn. Well, we grabbed a barb load for this. Actually, I still think I like the one I have better. Enemies. Enemies. Thank you. Wasn't a good shot. I'll go again. Just one more. Just one more. I stick with Skeep here. Yeah, I stick with Skeep. Just one more. If 
537th time on record. Oddly specific number, but I like it. See what this Spriggan just shellcasing? It gets the same blade as Rapscallion, but with shorter swap animations, and is shellcasing friendly. Now, that is without considering the fact that the the Spriggan itself can have um just like better gun performance than a Rapscallion. Can roll more crit parts as well. So there's a whole bunch of untapped stuff. Should have made one of the Dragon Lords cast chamber entrance lines. Welcome to die. Bye, Parasite. He almost didn't survive the setup. Almost. This is why we planned our crit around the Wyvern being dead, because it is currently dead. We keep 100% this way. I was hoping for a crit on a server run. Who wins the fist fight? Uh, Tron or Parasite? Parasite for sure. Parasite actually does damage. Tron doesn't. Oh, let's just form one Redmorn. Brick refused to fight Parasite. True! So, to all the people saying getting the Brutal Stampede I'm using for this build was hard... Just, just... Just, just... Just get it. Just like... Get it. It's like, go out and acquire it. No, it is not exactly that simple to get a, any specific part on anything, but it's a lot easier than it was, uh, thanks to the last patch. I love that Tooth Raider is just more and more proving itself every day. Tooth Raider is a literal best in slot item. Ooh, drill. Beautiful.
so sad I sold mine from the campaign. You can get another one very quickly. He countered my hammer with his his spear. That was actually a big brain drill. Good job. I haven't seen one of vendors yet. I would not recommend getting it from vendors because it's one of the most expensive, if not the most expensive item you can get in vendors for some reason. And a send it to the raider and a vendor is like 120 mil. Honestly, just like go on one of your characters and just get another low level one. How else would you get it? Just do the quest again on another character. The level of your Tooth Raider does not matter. At all. Excuse me, economy of the fuck. Yeah, and Ascended Last Rites is like 12 mil. Ascended Tooth Raider is like 120. <laughs> Cooldown spell charge status chance. Almost what I like for the Threads of Fate. Almost. Not quite. There we go. So, I'm going to look for more parts of these um, that keep the 40 blade. Like, if I can get one with a much lower mag, which should be doable, 25 mag should be a roll on this. Um, if it can get the 21 crit while still having the 40 blade, I doubt it can, but if it can, that's cool. Not really useful directly, but cool. Um, maybe faster reload speed accessory, which also should be possible. Um, what shield does it have? It has amped. I guess a different kind there would also be good. And then figure out which element is optimal. But uh, a lot of science to do. I'm going to call it a little bit early, though. Um, as I said at the start of stream, I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. I might take a nap, but who knows? I might end up going down this theory crafting rabbit hole for too long. Also, other games I'm juggling. Also, other responsibilities, etc., etc. Um, so, I've got more stuff to deal with. Tomorrow will be... I don't know what I'm streaming tomorrow. Hi, Felicia. Bye, Felicia. I don't know what I'm streaming tomorrow. It'll be either this or a uh, continuation of the Dragon Age series playthrough. Small chance I do some Back for Blood. I really enjoyed playing that last night with friends, so I might try to get people again and play some Back for Blood at some point. We'll see. We'll see. Um. Anyway, let's find where we're going for the raid. Um. Lazy's on. We'll go to Lazy. Yeah, get those quag chads in. I will see you over there. Lazy's doing a uh, special event run. Um, and uh, just various intense C100 stuffs and things. So uh, if you like endgame stuff and you're not familiar, I'm sure everyone here already is, but I may as well plug. I'll see you guys over there. Bye-bye.